Hello and welcome to Chicory's Maintenance Series. This week we're going to talk about Chicory's Cutlass Bearing Wear. The reason I'm bringing this up now is because there was a discussion on the Nordhaven Owners Group this week about Cutlass Bearing Wear and I participated in it and talked a little bit about Chicory's um, excessive wear and the reasons for it I believe and I thought I would just add this to a video this week so you could participate in the discussion essentially we had on the Nordhaven Owners Group. So here we go. First I'm going to spend a couple seconds talking about what is a cutlass bearing. It is a naval brass sleeve and it has interior to this sleeve a bonded uh, rubber lining with grooves cut in it. And these grooves allow water to flow through. Now this um, image that I'm showing here happens to be a cutlass bearing that's put into a strut. Now this has a much better water flow than one that's put into a stern tube into a boat because obviously as this uh, strut goes through the water, uh, water's forced through these channels and it's uh, very well cleared. In a stern tube, uh, the amount of water that can flow through there is proportional to how much comes out the stuffing box and if you have a driftless stuffing box, um, of course there's lubrication there, but it moves at a slower rate. Regardless, there's plenty of lubrication, but the thing that I'm zeroing in on here is how well the water can clear debris or how uh, the debris will affect the bearing. If you watch my cutlass bearing replacement on chicory uh, video, you know that I used a hydraulic power pack to push the bearing out out of the uh, stern tube. Now this is a little bit different than a lot of people do it. A lot of people use a sawzall or a hacksaw to cut it apart and mutilate it. But the way I did it allowed me a little better opportunity to analyze the bearing afterwards and understand exactly where and how my uh, wear happened. And that's what I'm going to talk about next. Now the first thing I did when I pulled the bearing out was I measured the thickness of the rubber and compared it to what the theoretical brand new thickness should have been and then I came up with how much wear happened on the rubber parts of the cutlass bearing. So you'll notice uh, on the front edge of the cutlass bearing that's closer to the engine and further away from the prop that the wear was very very minimal and very even. This is in sharp contrast to the uh, aft end of the cutlass bearing where it is close to the prop and there I saw very significant wear and you can see from the measurements there um, this is on each side of the prop shaft so these numbers actually have to be added together to uh, calculate total clearance and for reference American Boat and Yacht Council recommendations for a two inch uh, shaft which is mine is not to exceed ten thousandths of an inch. Well you can see I am you know triple quadruple that um, so it's a significant amount of wear. A lot of that has to do with the wear pattern and you can see here uh, I've illustrated in the light gray on top of the cutlass bearing sort of how the wear pattern is. Now this wear pattern is actually like one and a half times this length but I was only able to illustrate this pattern uh, based on the photo I could find. Um, I threw away the cutlass bearing so I didn't take any pictures. I'm regretting that a little bit now. But anyway, so you can see that it shows that um, the wear is much, much more at the very end of the cutlass bearing and it uh, gradually gets less and less as it moves into the cutlass bearing. Now there's a couple reasons that this could be happening and I'm going to discuss that now. The first reason is we spend a lot of time cruising in relatively shallow water that's very turbid. It has a lot of suspended um, either sand or fine mud in it. Uh, we spend, you know, let's say five, six months out of the year in the Bahamas in shallow um, sandy water. And then a lot of times during hurricane season we go up to the Chesapeake which is also has fine mud. We spend a lot of time in the Keys. Certainly we run offshore often but as a percentage of the time underway uh, it's not it's not significant because you know we'll do a 48 hour run or a 50 hour run or whatever the case may be um, to jump from inlet to inlet but it's not like we're going 
uh, almost always in the ocean like a lot of people do when they're crossing oceans or maybe on the west coast they're going from um, Seattle to Alaska, you know, where they're in deeper water. We have a much different cruising uh, profile than those individuals. In addition, uh, we have some growth that we've experienced in the Bahamas where each one of those grooves that you can see in this photo, we get some hard growth on the shaft in those little grooves where the water can be. And uh, when we start up underway, we can actually hear the thump, 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 thump of that growth being worn away, which of course has a probably significant impact on the life of the cutlass bearing. And I would suspect that that is uh, more prevalent towards the back of the bearing, which may contribute to this. And then the final thing, of course, is if the prop was out of balance and, you know, there was weight on one sa side that was swinging uh, centrifugally around, it could also produce this wear pattern. Um, I have had the prop balanced, but it was 13 years ago, so I'm guessing it's due for it. And based on this wear pattern, next time I haul the boat, I definitely will have the prop brought into a prop shop and have it um, gone through and balanced and um, tuned. So you can see that there was three different ways that I believe that we had excessive wear on our cutlass bearing. And what I mean by excessive wear is every two years we essentially replace the cutlass bearing when we haul out for bottom paint and service of our uh, NIAD stabilizers. If you've noticed through the video series, I am very proactive when it comes to servicing equipment and the cutlass bearing is certainly something that we're not going to let go. Now I did feel a difference when we put the new cutlass bearing in. Um, there was much less vibration. Not that we have a lot of vibration on chicory, but you can feel it. You know, you get used to it over the time. And so our cutlass bearings have been lasting between 800 and 1,000 hours underway. Um, I would think that, you know, 2,500 is the upper limit. Now, I told you at the beginning of the video that there was a discussion on the Nordhaven Owners Group, and that, um, had a lot of people saying they were getting 4,000 and there's one individual that 8,000 hours out of their cutlass bearing. I think most of that is because they're open ocean cruising and there's no particulate in the water and the water flow is good. But when you're anchoring a lot of times and you're in two or three feet of water and there's sand and you're backing down and you're kicking up the sand and stuff, that certainly contributes to the wear. I don't find it too much of an issue that we replace it every two years. It's not very expensive and it's something that I'm doing myself now and I get to kind of see everything that's done. Um, but anyway, that's kind of the story of Chicory's Cutlass Bearing and uh, I appreciate you hanging in here. And once again, I thank you for your viewing, commenting, liking, and subscribing. Until next week, thanks for hanging in.